Hi, this is Jill Schiaparelli. Welcome to Health Tech Talk Live, uh, broadcast to you worldwide on the iHeart Media platform. We're here live in Pennsylvania at the Pennsylvania Convention Center at UBM Cannon's Medical Design and Manufacturing Conference. We've been talking to innovators throughout the spectrum of healthcare innovation and technology, and my next guest is a clinician who is working at the forefront of orthopedic innovation. Innovation, I'd like to introduce Dr. Neil Sheff. Neil Sheff. Nice pleasure. You. Thank you for uh, having me. Um, it's our pleasure. Um, Dr. Sheff has a really interesting background. Not only is he an orthopedic surgeon, but he's been in investment banking, and that's a, that's a really unique uh, combination. It is. Um, I did my undergraduate training here at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, and uh, I was a Wharton and uh, engineering student undergrad and decided to learn a little bit more about healthcare business before becoming a physician. So I went to New York and worked at Solomon Smith Barney in healthcare investment banking for a couple of years and then came back to medical school. And I'm, I'm sure that has uh, given you fantastic perspective into, into the different roles and the different perspectives of industry. It has it's given me a unique view, I think, on healthcare. Uh, and I do look at healthcare as a little bit more of a business than, um, than it used to be. And that's sort of the direction that we're changing in. So I think it's given me a unique way to look at it and understand what's happening on the change sort of in healthcare reform. Excellent, excellent. What are, in, in, you know, obviously being a professor at UPenn and performing orthopedic surgery there, you are probably approached with many of the latest uh, technologies and concepts. What are you seeing in orthopedics right now that's particularly exciting? Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest things that uh, we're seeing right now and one of the biggest questions specifically for what I do is hip and knee replacements is, how do we get implants to last longer? Uh, and number two is how do we get implants to feel a little bit more normal, as if patients don't have artificial joints. On the knee side, um, the, one of the biggest things is trying to keep all four ligaments intact in the knee. And there are new prostheses that are coming out now. There's one that's been out for about a year and a half, and there's a second one that's coming out in about a month from now. And luckily I've been chosen to be one of the 25 surgeons in the world to be able to get the implant uh, uh, trays to be able to actually perform this procedure oh, where terrific. you can do a knee replacement and keep all four ligaments intact. Wow, that's great. Uh, which I'm excited about because I think for the right choice uh, of patient and the right population, this is going to actually work out well where patients will feel like they have more of a normal knee. Uh, on the hip side, uh, I think we've done a very good job of recreating a normal hip with our prosthesis. So most people with a hip replacement done properly at about a year can't remember which hip they had replaced. However, one of the things that we do worry about is infection. Right. And so one of the things that I'm actually working on in the lab right now is looking at implants that are pre-coated with antibiotics. Right. So these implants, as you fit them into the patient, is this going to help prevent potentially them getting an infection in this joint replacement over time? So I think those are probably the two biggest things that I can think of uh, on the innovation front. Uh, that is also helping us sort of keep longevity as well as get patients to feel right. more normal after that, joint replacement. That's, those are all, all worthy goals. Um, I understand you were on a panel earlier today here at yeah. the UMB conference and you were uh, talking about the importance of the collaboration between clinicians and industry in bringing products to the commercial market. Why is that important? Yeah, I, I think it's, I think historically engineers, I think speak a different language than we do. and very, very bright individuals that have amazing ideas, but are not privy to some of the clinical problems that we're seeing on okay. a day-to-day -day basis. And I think historically, engineers would come up with a product and physicians or surgeons were given this product and say, okay, we'll use it. And we weren't sure if they were actually targeting the clinical problems that we see on a daily basis. And I think now, I think you've got two groups of people who are seeing patients from a different perspective right. and they need to come and speak the same language. Right. And as a result, I think when, so for example, this new knee replacement, they had a group of 17 surgeons from around the world who were part of the design team with engineers from a company sure. to look at how do we design this and how does this counter the problems that we're seeing. And I think when you're looking at technology, it's important to understand what problem you're trying to solve. And at and what point in the design process do you think it's optimal for the clinician to become involved with the in company? I think it's right from the beginning. Okay. And I think, you know, especially at the University of Pennsylvania, we have a very large translational medicine department. And again, it's trying to bridge that gap between our basic scientists and clinicians. Right. And so as basic scientists come up with ideas and say, we can do this and we can create this product or we can create uh, a solution for this, is this what you're seeing? So the, I think the collaboration and the, and the conversation starts early uh, in the whole process. And I, and I think. It's, it's conferences like this that really allow us to collaborate and start that dialogue early to really head in the right direction as opposed to in two different directions and hopefully we can talk later. Right. So. 
Absolutely. And I, I think that's one of the things we're seeing about the benefit. A lot of different people have sat in this chair yeah. talking about the importance of the collaboration. So yeah. I'm so glad you see that too. Um, if you think about uh, working with companies, what is your ideal collaboration with a company look like? Yeah, how, how much time do you like to spend? How do you like to interact with them? Yeah, I think one of the things that I'm really interested in with industry, and I think the collaboration is really through education. Ah, okay. And I think that, again, historically, uh, implant companies, specifically in orthopedic surgery, would look at surgeons and say, hey, listen, we can pay you X number of dollars to be a consultant for us and use our implants, and that might have been attractive. And I think the new paradigm now is, well, can we train people in the fundamentals of joint replacement? And as, as a as a bonus, you get to use our implants, right. and that's how you're learning the fundamentals of what you right. need to do. And I think right. that's the way that they will probably have the best benefit of growing business going forward, right. as we're training residents and fellows. Um, and that's really where I spend most of my time with, uh, with companies outside of design or outside of rolling out a new uh, device, is to really spend time in designing uh, courses for resident and fellow education. Right. Um, and so I think that's really the right collaboration going forward. And I think that's really where the synergy is going to be, I right. think, as we move forward into Smart. healthcare. Yeah, it feels like that will uh, position the product for optimal clinical success yeah. because it has all those components. Yeah, too. and again, I think, you know, again, companies like UBM as well as, as this whole MDNM conference, I think, is really focused on education. Absolutely. And again, bringing both sides together, I think, really helps foster that, that the, the proper collaboration and the and the communication that you need in order to go forward and actually get the products that you want out to market. Neil, thank you so much for talking nice to, thank to you for us having today. Me. I'm with Neil Sheff, Assistant Orthopedic uh, Professor at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm Jill Schiaparelli with Health Tech Talk Live, coming to you on the worldwide platform of iHeartMedia. I'd like to say thank you to UBM Cannon and a special thanks to 1-800-PUBLIC-RELATIONS for their media and PR support. Have a great day.